his name as well. So, real quick, um, besides being the most casually dressed person that we've had on stage, uh, 60 seconds, who are you to the audience? My name is Jelka Schmarek. I'm the founder of Digital Compact, which is an online magazine basically dealing with the digital scene. And um, yeah, I'm focusing on podcasts, on deep dive analysis. I've met Frank, I've met Judith, we shot photos. And okay. actually, I'm going to ask them some questions. Fantastic. So, I'm going to allow him to introduce our four incredible lions. But enjoy, take it away. People, please make some noise. First off, Mr. Frank Thelen. Second, maybe you've already bought his experiences. His name is Jochen. Please welcome Jochen Schweitzer. Also, we have one fabulous lady. Please welcome Judith Williams. And last, but by far not least, Carsten Maschi Maschmeyer on stage, please. Am I on? Can you hear me? There we go. As these guys have a seat, just so you know, besides the fact that Joel's going to be asking some questions, you're going to be asking questions as well. So you know what to do? Slido.com, use your phone, tablet, laptop, whatever you want, and type in bit16 right over there, and you can ask questions. The top five questions will come up on the screen, and you can pick them and ask these lovely people. All right, so take it away. Thank you. You may notice that one guy is missing, uh, Ralph, in this case. I think he's in Asia, as far as I know, uh, buying goods. So he's earning money right now. And um, <laughs> say something. Earning money. Yeah, spending, <laughs> spending. <laughs> earning versus burning. Uh, you may wonder why I'm coming in slippers. It's because I want to thank Felix Haas for creating kind of the living room of the digital ecosystem here in Munich. And um, yeah, I also dressed up a little Bavarian style. But one Berlin item uh, needs to be allowed. And um, please excuse me for a second. I, I forgot one item uh, backstage. The negative part about slippers is you look like a penguin yes. when on stage. Yes, and and Frank too. Limbury, I'm wearing Limbury. Yeah. Sollen wir euch jetzt irgendwie unterhalten in der Zwischenzeit, oder? Maybe we should dance or. I'm dealing with lines, so come on. Does make sense, right? <laughs> Felix asked me to shoot a picture of us uh, using the whip. I won't, okay? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a video, a video with sound. <sighs> Did you ever wondered about the, the, the way they're sitting in the show? I was asking myself why Judith is not sitting in the middle. Yes, I asked myself that as well. I mean, <laughs> it's obvious, right? <laughs> Should we change that for now, <laughs> for here? Let's move. <laughs> oh, should we? Oh, here, next to you. Yes. One. My pleasure, my pleasure. <laughs> Even though I do get very used to the two men sitting next to me, you know. The lovely so smell that comes here, is this your perfume? Is it of course it is, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Jochen, I had a tough situation this morning. I was eating breakfast, and when I'm, you know, on the road and doing business, I tend to eat, like, pancakes, sausages, oh. Oh. eggs. Oh. I felt so bad. I was asking myself, shit, I'm going to interview Jochen Schweitzer, Come who's closer. famous for, you know, eating all, uh, all, all the only healthy stuff, doing lots of sport. And then my uh, morning was completely ruined when the founder of Runtastic sat in, fr in front of yes. me, so the next fitness guy. Exactly. But um, to get started, you're the experience guy in a way. It's your business to sell experiences. Mm -hmm. um, how does it feel to be part of the show? And how is it done? I mean, I'm asking myself, do you guys, you know, go in there for one week and shoot all this stuff? and no, no, we shoot over a longer period, uh, over several weeks, and uh, I think we produced this show within 15 production days, long days, I must say, very long days. And, uh, and then we have, uh, in total, I think we invest maybe 25 days, 25 working days in each um, uh, series of shows. Also interesting, how, how long do the, the, the pitches in real life take? I mean, in the TV uh, scene, it looks like... Up to two hours. Like yeah, it, uh, the pitches can last very long. Some pitches are short, 30 minutes. But I think the longest pitch we ever had was nearly two hours. 
even a little it? further, right? Even the, longer? Two and a half hours for a pitch. Once we had that. Yeah, two and a half hours. Two and, two and, and a half, half hours yeah, was yeah. our longest one. Yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, that's but they bring that down to 12 minutes, so never mind. Yeah. Judith, I mean. Can yeah. you tell us some of the most funniest moments? Maybe also one of the funniest that didn't make it to the to the show in the very end. One of the funniest moments. Well, I have to say the the most funniest lion is really Carsten. <laughs> he, and on backstage, yes. he's so funny. He's really he's making a lot of jokes, and we have yes. a very very good time with him. So he's always yeah, you're very That's right. very entertaining. And because <laughs> I sit next to him, and this is re he's really tricky. He <laughs> writes down his jokes on a piece of paper. And then he shows them to me, and I'm cracking up because of the joke. And, and then he's asking about the numbers, and I don't get the numbers. So I'm like, ah, okay. So what were the numbers again? So yeah, that's pretty funny. But we do have some very funny things happening. Like Johan and I once danced together. We were like the love ensemble in well, there. Well, I, I must say, this is next Tuesday, so that's tomorrow. Yeah. And it was oh, not. That it was not. That was more fight. Well, <laughs> she tried to slap me, to punch me with uh, with a hand full of uh, color. Yes. And I fortunately just caught this hand in the air. Yes. And then we danced a little bit. Yeah, forceful. Some call it abuse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Isn't it also what the, 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 the founders call what you guys do with them after the show? No. Abusing? <laughs> Being hard? <laughs> we try not to. <laughs> I mean, uh, what I was asking myself is, how much reality is in the TV show? Because Frank, for instance, in, in my head, he's kind of the Dieter Bohlen of entrepreneurship right now, because he always seems <laughs> harsh in criticism, you know, an attention span as long as a hamster, hard in, in, in each case. Is this like, like you really are, or is it just, you know, cut afterwards? No, it's staying in the script for you. <laughs> yeah, it's scripted. <laughs> it's scripted. And yeah. So the, the question was, how much, how much reality is in the show? And what, what I say is, uh, uh, it's faster. So that's um, artificial, that it's much faster. But beside that, uh, it's 100% real. Mm -hmm. So it, it's our money that we spend. It's our startups that we build like the startups I've built before. Um, and, and that's the great thing. So we, we build the bridge between entertainment, so people are interested and they want to see it. We have now three million viewers, uh, which, which is a lot. So you have to also bring a lot of entertainment in there so that people actually watch the show. And then the part of the startups is, is real. It, it's our money. We do the diligence. Some deals don't go through the due diligence. But once we invest, invest it, we, we, we really build companies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I was asking myself, obviously, is, as, as Carsten also said, scripted. In, in post-production, you have the possibility to make things sound different than they did when recording them, right? So, for instance, uh, I learned that Jochen quite often um, goes out and says, hey, I'm out of the deal at the very end, but sometimes he's cut to the very beginning. So, does this happen on a regular basis, that the stuff we see as the TV viewer is slightly different from a, you know, obviously they want to be, make it m mostly interesting? But is I it think what they, what they honestly try they try to give a, a realistic cut of what has happened over a longer period of time. That's what they try. And mostly, they are successful in their try. Sometimes, we look at it and we say, oh, it was slightly different. Mm -hmm. But um, I would say in 80% of the cases, the edited pitch is pretty much like how it was when we were airing it within an hour. I would say so, yeah. I think, I think we have to explain that we have the normal situation like in the daily business of the media. If you make a press interview, they can print 10 pages and they have to cut it to make spans, attention for two pages, right? So we have in, totally, in total 80 pitches. You don't want to hear 80 times do you have depths? What was the first moment when you meet, met each other, right? So they cut it, and uh, I think that's the artificial thing. Friends of mine ask me, hey, you are stupid. You forgot to ask this. You didn't <laughs> mention this. I said, hey, hey, we did it. I, I, I tried to get the whole uh, material, not the only the shortcut, mm -hmm. right? So much more questions. Mm -hmm. But, but again, here, if, if we would show all this, then it would not be entertaining. So we have to That's find right. the balance. 
It was not a good answer. You are unhappy because you take me. To be perfectly honest, I took. You know, you know, my job is because I'm from. I'm a street fighter, right? Uh -huh. If you have nothing learned than me, and uh, <laughs> then I have to be the comedian of life. I understood. To be perfectly honest, I took this with me because I wasn't sure. Is it from your wife, or do you treat her? <laughs> The, the guy at the entrance asked me whether I'm really sure that I want to attend this event and not the Venus in Berlin. He said, you might be wrong here, so <laughs> ah, I guess you're right. Maybe after show program? <laughs> yeah, maybe. What are you doing afterwards? Uh, I go to Zurich now, uh, or in, in an hour, uh, because a uh, company where, I could be, uh, where I'm invested, they have an uh, M&A pitch tomorrow morning. We will meet us tonight in the hotel. We prepare the pitch. We does that come we, monit we, the mo end? we monitor the pitch so that they are well prepared for the most expected questions, that the body language will work, that the smile is there also with uh, crucial questions. So that's a preparation tonight in Zurich and tomorrow afternoon I'll be back. We have uh, the, the big lion meeting with our producer, as you can tell, and the, the broadcast from Vox, Kai Sturm, and so we plan the next show. Mm, okay. No, the reason why I bought this is um, I wasn't sure whether you kill me for calling you mushy, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, what I was asking myself is, I mean, obviously your, your wife, I think you call her Vroni, is that correct? Veronica? No. You no. don't call her Vroni? No, the, the, I, maybe, uh, but she is coming from Zoling and they say Vero, from Veronica. We together are Veronica. Ah. <laughs> That's like <laughs> Brangelina of the... No, 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 not the same. Uh. We want to stay together, right? Yeah, and there are a lot of sharp things in Zoling, so I yeah. guess... I, I know on, on all uh, airports where the restrooms are. Really? Not like bread yeah. here was under pressure, That's right? Thank you. On the fist, yeah. <laughs> Piss on the fist. <laughs> um, no, I was interested in what did Veronica say when, when Vox asked you uh, to be part of the show? I mean, she's the showbiz expert, I guess, so far. No, she is not a show expert. She is a very, very talented actress. I could never do what she does. To jump in a totally different personality, to live for eight weeks or three months in another person, uh, for me, the, the hardest uh, day in the show was the, the shooting for the trailer. For 30 seconds, it took eight to 10 hours. Carsten, your left leg a little bit more, smile more. No, the eyes, look, look there. No, for, don't forget your hand. That's not me. I'm in the show because it's what I, I'm doing all the day, day, day for day. I see 20, 10, 10, 10, 15, 20, pitches a week, founder teams, and there's just one difference, they are the cameras. But after you were very, you gave me a very warm welcome. So after five, six pitches at the end of the first day, I forgot the cameras. And my motivation is in Germany, they are all saying we have to support the startups. Just talking, I wanted to do something. And for me, the show, the, 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 the Lions, the Lions show is, is a lesson about the future. I see targets, I see products, I see services which I wouldn't have seen in my normal life because I have a too close focus. And the second point is we get the targets for a lower price because we get them earlier and after when they were on the channel three, four million people will see the product, the service, the revenues are increasing enormously, so the company is much more worse. And the third point is, the start, the, one second, the start, the start, that's always, that's always. What? The, 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 I thought you'd get mad. Because the, the, the startup industry that was <laughs> important for me is now aware that yes. Seed and Speed, my investment company, is now uh, offering early stage venture. That's the reason why I'm there and not because my wife is an actress. Yeah, actually, I, I left the wonderfully smelling woman um, to, to just ask this question. You know, I'm trying to understand the motivation of, of each of the lines. Maybe you guys can also say something. 
it does make sense from a business perspective often. I think Jochen is an, an expert in, in selling experiences and Jochen Schweitzer, the brand. Judith also. Frank uh, seems often to be some kind of someone that's really interested in, in pushing and accelerating entrepreneurship among Germans. And in your case, I was asking myself, yeah, well, why is he doing it? I thought whether it's about ego. Is it about ego going into a TV show? No, it's a high risk. It's, you can't uh, create a positive image just to be in a show. It's important how you are in the show. What questions uh, do you ask? How do you treat the founders? How respectful you are to the founders? How team-oriented with the colleagues? That's, uh, the, that's uh, the, yeah, we have to deliver. I must say, I didn't really want to do the show, as they asked me, um, because I said, well, you know, I'm not the typical startup person. And I asked many people around me, my family, etc., and they said, Judith, you have a different perspective of startup because your life story has been so different. And a show like that, and I think every one of us knows, uh, business, just as that show, can have many different colors. And there is not one answer to a question, how to lead a startup or what kind of business you're supposed to have. This world is wild, business is wild. And I think something really important is in the show is that each uh, lion, I always want to say dragon because in, in England <laughs> it's Dragon's Den, but each lion is so different in what they do and their perspective. And that gives the show a wonderful flavor of how life and how business is. And um, I think, well, just for me, then I decided, my goodness, well, if I do have something to tell, if I can give something positive to people out there, inspire, be at their side, be a mentor, help them not only with money, but with everything that I've gone through in my life, then I would like to be a part of it. That was it for me. What was a big learning for me is, I mean, we, come, we know each other for a very long time because we're, we're kind of in the same scene. You have scene. been together in kindergarten? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's a small scene in, in Germany. So, um, and what was, what was very new for me is like how in the bubble we lived. So we know only SAS, apps, and then somebody is selling a soup and I said, what the fuck is soup? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and then, then you learn like, okay, actually some people eat soup. And, uh, and so I, I said, you have to invest. Let's <laughs> do it together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly. Yeah. So you have a big inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, what, you, uh, what you did is doing and so on. So I, I learned a lot because we also, as startups, we live in, a, in our bubble where we only see apps and, and the stuff that we do. But there's a lot out there. And I learned a lot. And, and right now I have three food startups, which I have never had without a show. Yeah, I was about to ask exactly this. I mean, the deal flow seems quite out of scope for you in a way. Like your sweet spot normally is, as you just said, apps, marketplaces, e-commerce, and then there's someone who sells soup or builds bras. Or the bra thing was funny when you realize how big the market is in terms of the game. Oh man, I love bras. <laughs> <laughs> They're very expensive. <laughs> but but isn't this uh, sometimes a problem for you in in, in special? Uh, no. Uh, so we, we, I mean, when, when you look at the ideal venture capitalist, you always had a focus. So we are doing Asia e-commerce or something. I mean, that's all what the LPs are looking for. And when I look now at MyScape from soup to electric jets, uh, it, it's in general, it, it doesn't add up. But um, we have now a, a, a small part on food. So I will do more food deals because we learned there a lot. And the, the other things are really tech-driven uh, startups. So we, we can handle it. Jochen, how about you? I mean... You're a man that really stands for having a clear vision, certain values, whether it's food, whether it's sport, but also investing, I think. What gave the motivation for you and Special to, to be part of the show? When I was approached uh, by the production and they asked me to join, in the first step I said no. But then, when they asked me again, I realized when I was pitching for my idea to get investors to become the market leader in trading experiences, I failed. So I went to New York, uh, I, pre I, I, I presented my idea that was 12 years ago to trade experiences. I needed 1 million euro. And after 20 minutes, one of the five um, potential investors stood up and he said, well, Mr. Schweitzer, we don't believe that 
experiences can be traded. And honestly, on your approach to acquire cash, for this crazy idea, you will meet a lot of people and they have two things you don't have. First, time, and second, money. And then I flew home with no investment, I failed. So when Astrid from Sony, uh, in this conversation, she said, well, now you could be on the other side of the table. And that turned my mind. This is when I said, well, that's true because I got no investment and I still made it. Um es mit meinen Worten zu sagen, mit der Hand am Arm. <laughs> <laughs> Judith, come on, say your favorite saying as well. I hear that sentence about 50 times. <laughs> How can you, can, you trans can you translate that, Judith? I, I mean, sometimes I even uh, repeat you, his speeches while I'm sleeping because I hear them so often. <laughs> <laughs> so if you need to give a keynote and you're sick, call me up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, I'm always grateful if somebody tries to help me. No, but honestly, no, no. that was the reason. So yeah. I thought now I'm sitting on the other side of the table. Um, uh, Everything I was, uh, I was dreaming of, I was fighting for, um, came true. Um, and now I'm investing uh, from this side of the table, but I know how it feels on the other side. And this is why I always say, if you go out of the Höhle der Löwen without an investment, you didn't lose anything. I mean, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean, it's, it's, it's not, it's, you feel it's a fail, but you're not failed. You still can make it. And, uh, and I have been, I've had the same experience. But are you aware of the responsibility that comes with it, actually? Because, I mean, obviously, it's a great upside for startups to come to the show and have, you know, the, the, the PIs, the page impressions go up to the sky, skyrocket. But on the other hand, it also may happen. There are young people or elderly people that have a dream, that live a company. Mm -hmm. And then you guys that talk about this idea for an hour, which is close to nothing in comparison to someone that builds it like for seven years or something, you have the chance, or at least there's the risk of screwing it up totally. You know, if you if you go and say, hey, uh, you know, this sucks. There's a problem here. No. Isn't isn't it possible that this also is a problem for him afterwards? When I made my first presentation, when I was 18, to sell my software, the customer left the room in the middle and said, that's the worst presentation I've ever seen. He went out. <laughs> And that has been come to my or experienced this several times. And if you don't have the DNA to stand up and fight again and try it again, you are not a founder. Mm -hmm. So if you don't survive, if somebody comes into the Höhle der Löwen and I say, I believe that's a bad idea, then you are not a founder. And that's also important because um, I'm doing this for 20 years now. And in the beginning, everybody said, oh, you didn't get a real job, so you have to do a startup. So that was for 20 years. Now everybody says, whoa, startup, that's great. We have 5,000 people here in this uh, great, great event. So th the things changed. But I believe now we're a little bit too positive because the truth is somewhere in the middle. A startup is hard work, and it's not for everybody. And not because you have a good idea. Everybody needs to sweet talk. No, sorry. It's hard to build a startup, and I believe we have to reflect that reality in the show. But yet you have a really, really big exposure while knowing the company only for an hour. Yes. Does, is, is this enough time to understand a business model, a founder? Because, you know, this TV show is on air forever. In, not in completely. No. Not completely. I mean, that is, that is a big challenge for all of us because we have an hour, realistically an hour. Mm -hmm. We ask a lot of questions. At the end of the day, uh, we have to find out when you do the due diligence. Um, but but there's, I would say there's three grades of of untruth. There is people, they stand there and they something which they know is untrue. When we find out in the due diligence, the deal will not take place. And then there is people, they know that something really bad um, exists, they don't say it. That's what I call a passive lie, can also break the deal afterwards. And then there is people, Something is wrong in the company, but they don't really know, they don't really understand. This you can try to heal afterwards, but you never know. So at the end of the day, when I look at the founder standing in front 
of me and, and my colleagues, um, I have to judge on a personal feeling, pretty much. Is this person strong? Will this person stand up and fight when difficult times will come? And they will come, that's for sure. And if I'm convinced, yes, this is this kind of person, then I say, yeah, OK, I go for it. And then hopefully, in the due diligence, we find out that there is no lies. Mm -hmm. But sorry, we can do it in one hour. So what I don't tell is, you are a bad person. You will never have a good company. But what I can tell in one hour is, was the pitch good? Did I understand the product? Could he answer the questions? And sometimes we have very weak founders. They don't know the numbers. They cannot answer the questions. And then I believe it's our responsibility mm -hmm. to also blame them on TV. Yeah. But think of Sugar Shape, for instance. I mean, you talked about the model, and afterwards uh, understood that it's really, really big. You know what I mean? You, yeah. it, it's on air for, at least it feels like it's on air forever. And a, a small sentence may have great impact. Sorry to interrupt and crash the party here. We've got a couple of questions that are coming in from the audience. I was wondering if we could answer one of those. Uh, there's a question here that says, who of you has had the highest return on investment on a 100,000 euro angel investment? Does anyone have a story they'd like to share? Maybe it's me. Uh, I don't know. I, I did 100K in Wunderlist. And uh, that was way, way, way below 1 million. And we sold it for a couple of hundred million. Amazing. That's phenomenal. That's really good. What would you like to change about D DHDL, someone asks. What would you like to change about the show? <laughs> <laughs> they think it's perfect. I, I heard that the producer is sitting well, in the audience. <laughs> I think, uh, well, I think the show, the way it is, is pretty great and perfect. I'm a personal fan of the show nowadays because it inspires people to, you know, really get into business and say, hey, maybe something's possible, you know? But I think we should be a bit more free in communicating with the founders. Like if you have the feeling that is not a real entrepreneur, mm. if you want to offer him a license deal, you should be able to say, I don't believe you have the DNA to be an entrepreneur. I think you, your product is great. And how about me helping you business-wise? But building a company, you will not like that because I know what it's like. And you can see it in some people standing in front of you. So just a follow-up. This up. is one, oh, yeah. actually, this is, this is definitely uh, an issue. And there's another issue because you might, uh, uh, some of you might remember the pitch Find Penguins. And this guy, he didn't seem to be in control of what he uh, presented. But the idea was great. Yeah. But I didn't believe in the guy and he was asking for 200K. And I knew whoever would give him this 200K, he would lose the money, inclusive myself. So I had only two solutions, because the idea I liked. Okay. One solution was not to make an offer. The other solution was to say, you will never make it as a startup if I invest 200K even if I support you, you will not make it, except if I integrate you into my group of companies. And this is why I need 50%, because I need control. So it was a difficult decision for me. Do I make an offer? If I make an offer, I don't want to lose my money. But the guy, I was not convinced of the guy. I was convinced of the idea. And I'm selling more than 100,000 uh, experience trips per year. And so this app is um, an, 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 an additional value. And I could have easily helped the guy to, uh, to be successful. But what happened after the show, uh, we had a handshake. And then after the show, he came back and thought, oh, I slept over this idea. Um, I will take the 200K, but I will only give 30%. I said, thank you. <laughs> so, no deal. So, sorry, once I'm very quick. So, a license deal, equi hire, what, mm -hmm. what Jochen is sometimes doing, and then like a real plain VC investment. Yeah. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. So, we have to, to tell license, equi hire, create a straight equity mm -hmm. deal. That's something we, we can be better in communicating what we're yeah. doing. Yeah, that's right. Go ahead here. Um, maybe one last question. Um, how about the gone wrong deals? Because quite a few people out there were frustrated when they found out, hey, I mean, Jochen already said, right, due diligence and stuff. You had a handshake in the show, and then it doesn't take place. 
from an investor's perspective, it's totally normal to say, hey, handshake deal and afterwards comes the control thing. But maybe with your own words, can you say what's the problem sometimes when doing a deal on the show that doesn't take place in real life? I, I have one example. In the last uh, show, I made several deals. They're all posit positive. We paid the money, except one case. The person said in the show he has 500 customers. He uh, made show off with brand names who are customers. He said he has the patents. He is a founder. He is the first one on the, the whole world. In the night, in the diligence, we realized there's a company 10 years old in another country. There were no patents. We called the key customers or the key accounts. They didn't know him. And we said, OK, you are a liar. That's, that's, uh, it's, that's breakable, not yeah. unbreakable. OK, that's a great example. Yeah. Do you want to say something real quick? Yeah, and we're going to end on this one. OK, yeah. or you have founders that say, oh, great that you're going to invest because I'm quitting my job now, and I'm going back to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true story. Yeah. It, true, story. true story. And then you stand there and say, wait a minute, I am only <laughs> buying 5 or 10% of your yeah. company. I'm not going to do all that work. But things like that just happen, and you don't want to bash the founder, and so you don't always tell the press exactly who it was, because it would be bad for his business. That's why I would just ask to be a bit mild with us when we don't invest. It's not, it's definitely not that we sit on the couch and say, oh, I'm not going to invest in that and that and that. It really has reasons that are quite significant. Important point. Yeah. I think when I go out there and I give a handshake, I really want give the handshake, yeah. saying, yes, this is the deal. I want this deal. I want to be part of that story. I want to support this founder. If the deal afterwards doesn't take place, there is serious reasons. Mm -hmm. But we are, I, I can only speak for myself, but I'm never leichtfertig. How do you say that in English? I never take it easy. You or, never take it know. easy, and or, yeah. and it's we're really sad. I'm I'm really sad about a couple of deals that didn't go through because I think we could have been great. Super. All right, ladies and gentlemen, can we please give this panel an incredible hand? <laughs> this is such a treat to have them here. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank you for. Thank you so much. I was just wondering, what's with Martha?